Um, we are so glad that you're here. We have a studio audience here in New York because um, this is the one thing that I remember going to school and the teacher would come in and she'd say, okay, time for a pop quiz. Oh, crap. And I was never ready. This one, you don't even have to study for. This is a pop quiz and I invite you to get a pencil and paper um, and uh, follow along. Ask yourself the questions that I'm asking the studio audience. Before we had the audience sit down, we gave them this quiz. It is um, actually part of a chart I'll show you here in just a second. It's to figure out who you are. How many people do you know that say they're progressive? And they don't really even know what that means. I didn't know the difference. I, you know, when it, what, 10 years ago? You started looking and you say, okay, well, the Republicans, they're for smaller government and they're for lower taxes. and. The liberals are on the other side, the Democrats are on the other side. Now it's kind of complex because now liberals are no longer liberals, they're now progressives. What's the difference between a liberal and a progressive? Well, we have to find out who we are if we're going to solve anything so we can be honest with ourselves. Let me show you the difference between the choices that you're going to have to make. And I ask you to, uh, I ask you here to figure out and answer which one are you. Are you a liberal? Are you conservative? Are you a libertarian? Are you progressive? My guess is that most Americans are a libertarian. Wait until the end of the show before you say, that's ridiculous, because there's two kinds of libertarian. There are liberal libertarians and there are conservative libertarians, but there are not progressive libertarians. Why? Because these two are diametrically opposed to each other. About a hundred years ago, these two were diametrically opposed to each other. In the old days, when I was a kid, actually in the 1800s, and over in Europe it still is, liberal means something entirely different. The classic liberal is really more of a libertarian, somebody who is for absolute individual rights, they're for the smallest government possible. But progressives came in in the turn of the last century, and everybody started saying, yeah, I'm a progressive. Remember, the difference between a Marxist uh, and a progressive is what? It is the difference between revolution and evolution. They're both for massive, total government. Marxists do it through revolution. Progressives do it through evolution. Piece by piece, bit by bit, they eat at the Constitution. That's what it was designed to do, to progress past the United States Constitution because it's outdated. All right, so you can't be a classic liberal and a progressive. Progressives came into power, everybody said, this is great, we're gonna be this uh, country of progress. And then all of a sudden, they started saying, oh, wait a minute, you've got to, given us the income tax, you've given us the Fed, you've given us prohibition, you've given us World War I, and now you're trying to give us a global government through the League of Nations. It only took about four years before Americans were saying, okay, I'm not a progressive, I'm not a progressive. Kind of like what America is going through now. Progressives changed the name of liberal, changed the meaning they folded themselves into this, and by doing this, they took away anybody who believed in small government. Because there were progressives as the Republicans and progressive as Democrats. But there was nobody that believed until 1971, nobody believed or they didn't have a place at the table for very limited government. The table was, the chairs were taken away from the table that our founders were all sitting in. All of them were for smaller government, varying in size, but individual rights, smallest possible government. Progressives took it away from the table until a guy named Nolan in 1971 was sitting in his living room and he came up, he came up with a chart. Do we have it on the other side of this? And this is where we're going. We're going to ask you some questions today. Do you have the pencil and paper yet? We have some paper. Uh, we have some questions for you and you answer these questions. You'll find them on the internet. We'll show you at glenbeck.com. It's right there on the front if you want to do it. Uh, take the quiz during the show. You take the quiz at glenbeck.com. The link is right there on the front page. 1971. What was his name? David Nolan, right? David Nolan. He comes up with uh, libertarianism and this chart. Libertarianism, conservative, liberal, Van Jones as total government, and most people say they're right here. I'll tell you at the end of the show where I ended up. 
Hitler, Stalin, Mussolini, anybody that wants total government ends up right here. People who just want to hug the trees, but no government, um, but no government involvement, end up right here. Hug the trees and total government involvement ends up here. I guess don't worry about anything. You're a conservative. Don't worry about any government doing anything up here as a conservative, but you also want to save babies in, uh, with abortion here. You want to force everybody to make sure they're going to your church. You would be right down here or in this area, but on this side of it. Got it? No government. Anarchy is really up here. Most Americans are really, I think, right around here. Now, let's get to it. We had our judge, by the way, Judge Henry Napolitano is uh, with me. Do I have that right? You have it exactly right. Okay. I, I would argue, though, that the, that the advent of libertarians was Barry Goldwater running in 64 in this country and David Nolan, as you said, in 71 in England. Okay. Um, the, would you agree that most people are libertarian in their, in their thought process? Yes. When you ask them, would you rather live your life as you want to live it or would you rather the government told you how to live it? Almost everybody answers yes to the first question. Okay, so let me go on the questions here and take this at home. And again, you'll find the quiz at glenbeck.com. But here, let's go to the uh, first question and we're gonna start with, uh, what is it, Second Amendment and guns? Second Amendment and guns. Here is your first option. The Second Amendment only applies to militias, National Guard, and no specific protection is afforded to individuals. The government should decide how guns should be regulated. How many people said that? Nobody in this audience. Oh, you're all fans of the show. God bless you. <laughs> um, the, the next one is... Give me the next question. The Second Amendment clearly protects the right to bear arms. Government regulation of guns is a violation of the Second Amendment. The right to self-defense is meaningless without the means to defend yourself. Who, who, who checked that when you were taking the test? I generally support the right to bear arms. Government should regulate arms via registration requirements and other regulations is the next one. Who said that? Why did you, Regina, why did you say that? Because I, I guess I got stuck on uh, regulate arms via registration because maybe for the safety of more people, they should know where these guns are. Okay, anybody else? Is that what everybody was thinking? Anybody who voted for that? Judge, what's the problem with that? The, the problem is that the first thing that tyrants have done when they've taken over governments is to confiscate the guns from people. And if people have to register their guns, then the tyrants know where to go to get them. And that's the reason that the framers who weren't interested in hunting, they were interested in making sure another king didn't show up. Right. Well, they were interested in hunting, but not for sport. Right. They were hungry. Right. People had to go out and shoot it. They didn't go to get the little styrofoam pack at the freezer at the grocery store. But they didn't write that Second Amendment to protect their right to hunt because hunting was so natural to them. Right. They wrote it so that they could make sure, the people could make sure that no king ever showed up again. Well, then, if you don't have any registration at all, though, to Regina's point, how do you, how would you know where the bad guys are? I mean, you're just going to let anybody have a gun? Anybody can have anything? Anybody can have any means that is technologically uh, acceptable at the time to defend themselves because the right to self-defense is a natural right. And the government can't interfere with a natural right unless we have violated someone else's the natural The argument rights. will be, the argument will be, well, I mean, if you're going to go after, if you, have a, you can defend yourself with a, with a revolver. Right. You can defend yourself with a shotgun. Right. And if you're going against the government, if this was written for the government, they have tanks, they have airplanes, they have machine guns. You're not going to be able to defend yourself anyway. If the choice is between arms and armaments with which to defend yourself and repel a tyrant and submissive to the government so that they know every weapon you have can come and confiscate it, I would choose and would trust the right to defend myself by any means available as opposed to the other extreme of the government knowing where my guns are. Yes, Lisa. I, if, what if a crime is committed, they find a weapon buried or in a forest or something, and they've got to trace that weapon to find who it was registered to so they have a suspect to follow. 
That's making it's without regulation. That's without making it easier for the police to do their job, but it's not making it safer for you. You can repel the bad guy a lot faster than you can dial nine one one.